Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a jungle red spiral. Decide where you want the center of your spiral to be and give it a little pinch. And for this project, we're going to use the microwave splatter guard, and I have a link for it listed down below in the description box, so go ahead and check that out. Put your hemostat on one click because it doesn't need to be overly tight. You don't want to tear a hole in the center of your shirt. And then just begin to spiral it up and with your opposite hand create pleats and wrap it around. To remove the hemostat, unclick it and then with your other hand hold down the center of the spiral and gently wiggle it out. If you don't hold down the center of the spiral, you're going to pull it out with you and then you're going to have to redo it. And then just secure it by using rubber bands or a kite string, whichever you prefer. Continue to tighten down your spiral by tucking in all of the loose tails. Using a washable marker, mark out your pattern. And I got so excited to add the die, I forgot to build the ice barrier. You wanna build yourself some type of an ice barrier, and these are silicone cake molds that I got off of Amazon. And I also have a link for them down below in the description box, along with everything else that I use for tie dye. Grab a mask and give your project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure and then add your ice and you want to let your project batch for 48 hours after the ice melts. The reason for the 48 hours is it's cooler here in Oregon and I want these colors to be as vibrant as possible. So you can do 24 hours but I suggest 48. It's been about 72 hours since the ice has melted. I got busy and I couldn't get to the shirt and that's fine, it's no big deal. After 48 hours, nothing is really happening anyways. So you wanna start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fibers and then gradually increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I did two Synthropol hot water cycles. And then I did a third hot water cycle using Millsoft to bring softness back into the fabric after the dyeing process. And then I put it in the dryer and I ironed it and we'll come back and see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our jungle red ice dye after it's been washed and dried. And I think it turned out beautiful. I love jungle red. It's one of my absolute favorite reds. It's such a deep, dark and mysterious red. And it's really good for ice dyeing because it stays pretty true. It does not have a lot of color splits. And does anybody else notice the octopus tentacle? Because now that I see it, I cannot unsee it. So when I'm talking about the color splits and this color staying true, you know, some of the colors break off into a whole bunch of wild colors. Jungle Red stays pretty deep. It does have a little bit of an orange split, you know, into the golden yellow. And where the dye isn't overly concentrated, it can be a little bit pink, but not a lot. So if you're looking for a color that stays pretty true for ice dyeing, I do recommend the Jungle Red. It's definitely 
a really rich tone and it stays that way. And you can see here in the liquid swatch, when it's overly saturated, it has a really dark color to it. And where it has a lighter saturation, it's just a really rich, beautiful red. It's definitely my favorite. So what do you guys think of Jungle Red? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.